Are you ready for your tech tip from your garage chick? All right, today we're gonna teach you how to tighten your chain. I have brand new bolts and the locking nuts that come with them. They come separated. You have to put the locking nut on. You put it on what seems to be backwards, but it's not. And you have a place for one on this side. It goes in this hole right here. So move this locking nut up, and this one just screws in right here, like so. And I'm going to screw that all the way in. I won't bore you with that. And this one, same thing, other side. And the reason I'm replacing mine is, for some reason, on dirt bikes they like to use really soft metals that strip very easily, and you go in dirt and everything else. So I don't understand that. I guess it's lightweight. But anyway, this one got stripped, tried to use vice grips to turn it. Uh, the locking nut was on there really tight like that, and obviously I was trying to unscrew it so I could unscrew the bolt out. That wasn't happening, so I took a Dremel, which I don't have out, but it's basically a little wheel about this big, uh, a little electric grinder, and I grinded a slit in this and I took a screwdriver, put it that way, and hammered it. And I got this to turn, and then I could just screw it out once it got, once it wasn't locked anymore. So if you have troubles, that's a way. I didn't really damage anything. You can see a little nick right there, but it's nothing to worry about. So I'm gonna screw that in, and I'm gonna go ahead and screw this other one in. Okay, so one thing, I started screwing these in, and the locking nut started catching right here. You can see where my old one was scratching against that. So once it's in here, and you're tightening this, it's really close to that. I mean, it's on it, so you're going against that. But I know this is the correct part because I ordered it with the Yamaha part number, and I put this old one back in all the way here and noticed that it was scraping on here. So that's probably why this strips so easily. So if you are tightening your chain and these are starting to strip or close to it, I would go ahead and change these. I think I spent $7 on this with free sh and I got free shipping. So if you're gonna take the time to tighten your chain, you might as well just go ahead and replace this. Make your life easier. Yeah. All right, for the locking nuts, it's a 12 millimeter. To get it past that little section I was telling you about, you're probably going to have to use a wrench. Um, you're less likely to strip it if when you're moving it, once you take it off, if all this is off right here, you just move it upwards instead of fighting in between here and getting the wrench stuck, just move it out so you're less likely to strip it. But now I'll get to the meat and potatoes. Obviously your wheel will be on this and make sure you grease this too. And if you do take it out, uh, hit this with a rubber mallet. Don't hit it with a hammer because you'll mushroom that and then you, your SOL. So basically your tire will be on that. Uh, obviously it will go through your brake caliber like so. And your wheel will be through it. And then this is like this, but all the way through. And so you have these squares. This one goes on the other side. I put the red marks so I remember which way it goes because it's been off for a while. I've been waiting in the mail. But this flat part is going to hit against this. And you have your tire on and your chain. You're trying to get your chain tension. You push this up. It's going to slack it. And if you're trying, if you're getting just a little loose, you want it to go back. And in order for it to go back, you got to undo your locking nut and twist this out. You know, like that with a wrench so it's tedious and then you would lock your nut and say you want it right there now the reason they have these little hashes on that is so that your wheel is on there straight it's just a marking for you so this is going to go on the other side with the hashes sticking out but you want see this line right here on your frame and the line right here, if this was on the other side, 
I want to have the same number of ticks. So this is on the three right here. This is on the three furthest from the end. I would screw this out. And this is if you're starting all over, you need a reference point too. Because once you get it on a line, say like this, and you just want to tighten it a little bit, at that point you undo your locking nut and you take a wrench and you do half a turn, say two times. On this side, you do half a turn two times on that side. And your notches should stay lined up, but if you're in between notches like that, that's the reason you want to count how many times you untwisted this or twisted it in, whatever you're doing. But that's what the notches are for. And this, like I said, just goes on right there. And when you're tightening your chain, if you have an extra hand, it would help. You wanna, if you're the rider, you wanna sit on your bike. Because when you sit on it, the chain's gonna get a little bit tighter. So when the rear shock is up, you're gonna have a little bit of slack, but I mean, you will basically want to be able to put two fingers under right here where this is when you're off the bike. And when you're on it, it's going to get a little bit closer. And that is how you tighten your chain. Here's one free fact. If you do take your wheel off, see your brake disc right here? You hit, take your wheel off, try not to hit your rear brake because it's going to close your caliber and it's going to be a real pain get this to go back on. Just make your life easier. Just don't touch the brake. Side, this is what it looks like with a wheel on. If you're not taking your wheel off, you're not replacing these. Uh, these are really long. You might not have to take your wheel off to replace it, but you might just it's just easier. This is a 1 and 1 16th. You're going to have to loosen this either way so you can move your wheel back and forth. It's just simply the other side. This is the grease that I used to grease the shaft and it's worked well for me. I've used it before. It hasn't given me any problems. So there you go. Okay, once you're satisfied with how many links you've taken out, I have mine set up right here. I'm about to put the master link in right here. I have plenty of room to go back if I need to. Plenty of room to play with right here. And another thing is you don't want to get it too close because if you get it too close, I've done this before, your tire will, when you're backing your bike up, your tire will hit this plastic right here and it will flip up like that. It didn't happen to me on this bike. Um, it was on a Suzuki 250, but that thing would, well, I mean, this is like really flimsy actually. But uh, that thing would, the notches would hit it and it would just tick and it's really annoying. So, all right, short and sweet. So this is your master link. This is your little cap that goes over it. When you're putting it on, it's gonna go like this. You're gonna slide that and it's gonna click on these notches. When you're taking it off, it's gonna be like this. So it's gonna be really tight and you have to pull it off. What I did is I took a screwdriver and put it through this to hold it. When I set it down on the table, and I took pliers and I pulled it like this. It's actually really easy to do it that way. It's on the bike. It's a whole other story. It's a pain. But let's go put it on. All right. My cameraman abandoned me, so I'm going to try to do this without shaking the camera. Slide this through the other side. Put this on. This is fun one handed. Uh, like that. And with this, now this is something, mm, some people know, some people don't. If you're watching this and you're learning how to do it, you might not know. But anyway, you want to slide this on away from you, this way. I, ha I have a friend, and he said that he had his on this way. And long story short, his chain broke, and like this thing flew off and hit him or something. But basically, it's safer just to put it on, go ahead and put it on this way. So that's what I'm going to do. So you slide this over like this, and you push this on, and as you can see, it's really freaking hard, so I'm going to have to 
hammer it with a screwdriver or whatever I can fit on there. So, Okay, got it on. All I did was take these pair of pliers, put it right here, and push that way. Um, this is a little loose, obviously, because it's a different master link. I mean, once I tighten the chain, we see how it does. But I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So. <coughs> Alright, so I have my chain on. It's a little tight. Um, earlier I told you two fingers right here. I could fit two fingers in there. Maybe I'm just so used to having such a loose change because I'm lazy. But it's also on the stand. But when I took it off, another thing is you want to be able to move this bottom one about one to one and a half inches when you're not sitting on it. And then when you're sitting on it, you don't want it too tight because when the bottom's up all the way, if you're by yourself and you have to, just put your weight on the seat and push this frame towards yourself and see how tight it is. You don't want your chain to come off because it's too loose, but you don't want to be too tight and just snap. You jump and land really hard and bottom out. You don't want your chain to snap on you. Because when the thing snaps off, it's going to hurt. Anyway, so for now, I just hand tighten this bolt over here. The 1 and 1 16th bolt, the big one, that's holding the shaft on. And like I said, it's a little too tight. I had it four notches right here. So it's even on both sides. There's one up here and there's a notch down here. And I'm loosening this. And I want... It wasn't out all the way. But still on the notches. I want to bring this... Yeah, and I want to give it a little bit more slack. So I have a 10 millimeter. I'm going to go one, flip it, two, and three. Lock this. This thing don't move on me when I'm adjusting the other one. I don't know why it's not working. It's the wrong one. Alright. Other side. Three. And this one's already backed out. Move this out of my way. And I want to go in. Same thing. Four and four. Got a lot of wrenches. Don't do it too tight because you might be readjusting. Alright, so I did my three. It didn't really look like it moved too much. Loosen this up. Three turns that might not be enough, but let's see. Tighten this hand tight so it don't move on you. Yeah, that's a little bit looser. Okay. Now, crap on the leg. It's a 
little bit looser. I can move this. Doesn't feel stupid tight. I'm gonna sit on it. Gets tighter. And I still got some slack, but it's not gonna get off. It's more. Sit. about two finger space and this doesn't move as much so the bottom when you're off one one and a half movement and when you're on less movement obviously and about one or two fingers right here and then I'll tighten that bolt with the ratchet don't forget about that don't want your wheel fall off and that is how you tighten your chain